Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be a bit of a, you know, reading update. I didn't film and post this on Saturday like I usually do because I defended my dissertation this week and since then I kind of wanted to do a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> so that's been really great. It's such a relief to finally be done with the defense. You know, I like I, I do still need to submit my dissertation to the graduate school. I am past the big hurdle so I am done with my PhD. Like. Thank God, it has finally happened, <laughs> so I am very excited about that. But yeah, I have four books to talk to you about today. That We've got some thrillers, uh, romance, and fantasy. I realize that I haven't really read that much like adult sci-fi and fantasy lately, but to be honest, I just haven't had the energy to do that, I guess. So hopefully sometime soon I'll kind of get back into that. But you know, hopefully no one is horribly disappointed that I haven't been reading a lot of adult sci-fi and fantasy lately, but here we are. Before we get started, leave a heart emoji in the comments to let me know that you're here, and like always, we'll move our way from the lowest to the highest rated. So the first book I'll talk about today is a two-star book, and that's The Retreat by Elizabeth de Mariaffi. So I received this for review from the publisher through NetGalley, and this comes out July 20th. So this is an adult thriller, and we follow Maeve as she arrives at this high water center for the arts in the mountains to try to begin her own dance company. An avalanche happens, and she's trapped with six other guests, and someone turns up dead. So this had a fantastic premise with this sort of like locked room mystery type vibe set in a snowy climate. I was really excited about that, and like I feel like I should have loved it, but I just didn't think it had the best execution. The pacing was all right. It was broken up into seven days instead of chapters. And I do think that this didn't work that well for me just because some of these sections are much harder to get through because they are really long. And I think it probably would have been better for me to have like actual chapters with like perhaps a header, you know, like day one, day two, all of that. So that was, you know, a bit of a, a miss for me. I do feel really confused and kind of meh about the general plot and reveals though. Like I still don't entirely understand the reasons behind why anything happened. So I feel like that's a big contributing factor as to why I rated it two stars. Like finishing the book and not really knowing why anything happened is not great. Nor could I remember the main character's name immediately after I finished it. So I was like, hmm, you know, for me, this just didn't work quite as well as I wanted it to. I think the characters are also not particularly likable overall. Maeve, again, this main character is this dancer and she's trying to become a director. I think she's okay. She had been in an abusive relationship and she's still kind of trying to recover from that. And she also has to deal with this really awful relationship with her mother. You know, I think, aside from that, I don't know, she was she was just okay. And I do think that the best part of the book is actually her friendship with Anna, who is another guest at this, this place. And it actually does seem like a really nice friendship. I kind of wish we had been able to see that more, but I did like what we saw there. Everyone else, I think, is pretty manipulative in their own ways. I really disliked some of the other guests, especially Dan and Sim, Sim, I don't know, because both of them are pretty controlling guys. So yeah, overall, this had a really great premise, but unfortunately it was kind of just a lackluster story in general for me. Now we'll move to the three star books, and the only book I'll talk about here is Bring Me Back by B.A. Paris. So this is an adult thriller following Finn and Layla. They are driving back from holiday, and Finn goes into the service station, and uh, Layla ends up vanishing, never to be seen again. So then 12 years later, Finn has built a life with Layla's sister, and he receives a phone call that someone has seen Layla. So part one was really great. I think it had the fantastic pacing and it definitely drew me in. But then I think parts two and three just kind of lost me a bit. We have a couple of timelines here. We have this current timeline as well as the past with what happened leading up to Layla's disappearance. I thought that actually generally worked pretty well, though I definitely had some confusion throughout, I think, as to what had actually happened, you know, that, that fateful night all those years ago. So I was on the right track with the big reveal, though I was slightly off about it. And I kind of felt like, huh, okay, after finishing it, and I, like, I don't know, I'm, I really liked the idea of it, but I just feel like there was a bit of a disconnect for me for some reason, even though, again, the idea was really interesting. Still, I think it's easy and quick to read. I actually finished it in just a couple of hours. I would certainly read more by this author. In terms of the characters, I just have to say, you know, Peggy the dog is the best. <laughs> Our main male lead here, Finn, is okay. He certainly has a lot of anger issues. I think he really doesn't trust others to kind of tell them the truth, even though they are supportive of him. 
And I did kind of get annoyed with him at times, you know, especially towards the end, because he's like really impulsive and just makes some very ill-advised decisions. Layla, I think, is harder to get a good sense of her, but she seems to be like a bit flighty and naive. And I certainly didn't like a particular choice that she made. Ellen, Layla's sister, seems a bit more stable and I felt bad for her mostly. And then we also have some side characters, Ruby and Harry, who seem generally supportive. Um, but yeah, so like I don't want to say too much more about the characters because, you know, I don't want to spoil anything. But, you know, overall, I don't think I would reread this particular book, but it's definitely a really nice popcorn or beach read. So if you're in the mood for that, like I would definitely suggest picking it up. I read it at the pool and had a grand time doing so. <laughs> so, you know, it was definitely like a, a fun, easy read for me. Then we have a three and a half star book, and that's Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass. So this is YA fantasy, and this is book six in the Throne of Glass series. So we follow Kale and Nezrin as they go to the southern continent to seek allies and healing. Irene, who is a healer there, must decide if she will actually help Kale. So generally, I liked this, but I definitely had some issues again with it. The, like, it seems like every book except for the, the last one, you know, it felt like it was just unnecessarily long. <laughs> I did really like the new setting and the characters though. It actually had some reveals that had me exclaiming, oh shit, out loud, so that was exciting. <laughs> you know, I think there were some fun action scenes here, particularly with Nezrin, but overall I think it's more character driven, especially with Irene trying to heal Kale. I'm pleased that I did enjoy this. I was very nervous going into this because I haven't really made it much of a secret that I haven't liked Kale throughout this. And, you know, knowing that this book focuses more on him, I was like, oh no, am I going to just hate this? But I'm pleased to report that I did enjoy my time with it. In terms of Kale, he does get a lot better here, but I, I don't think he's going to be my favorite still. We do have some really nice development with him coming to terms with his injury and possibly not being able to do the things that he used to. And this felt very realistically portrayed. I think he has a lot of emotional trauma to kind of work through as well. And I did enjoy his journey working through this with Irene's help. But again, there's just still something about him that I don't love. Again, he is a lot better though. I will say that. <laughs> Irene is definitely one of my favorite parts of this particular book. I really liked her in these short stories and I was glad to see her again here. She also, I think, has to deal with facing some feelings and emotional trauma in her past. And, you know, while their particular story, I think, is not terribly surprising, I do really like where they end up. I also liked getting to see Irene's powers as a healer and just like this whole tower of healers. I think this ha this helps make the setting really cool. Like there's a, a library in this tower that I thought was awesome and we get to have some like cool and creepy moments there. Irene is certainly not perfect though, and she does not have the best bedside manner, but I think it's a good learning experience for her. I also really like Nezrin's journey. I think I was kind of so-so on her romantic pairing, like going into this book, and I was definitely here for just the development of her romance because I think the way things go is, is better suited to her. <laughs> to her. I also liked seeing her, you know, realizing what she wants and needs and also just generally being badass. I think the royals that we get here are a bit of a mixed bag. I did really like Sartak. I don't know if that's how you say it. In particular, he is a rook writer and also I don't know how to pronounce that. He seems more honorable though. And I really liked getting to see all these rook writers and their general culture. The rooks, I again don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but they, they're like giant birds. And so I'm like really excited to see them face off against wyverns perhaps. We also have some giant spiders here, and so there were a lot of moments that reminded me of like Shelob, so that was fun, but also like I hate spiders, so that was like, mm, I don't know how much I love to read about it, but I did enjoy it. So I think for me, what made this a three and a half star book is like, one, I had some moments where I was like, okay, you know, how far into this book am I? And like, if I have to check how far I am into the book, like that kind of gives me a little bit of an indication that I'm not super into or not I'm not as into the book as I would have liked but also like oh my god once I noticed this I couldn't not notice it but there's like this constant use of the word breathed when describing how someone talks and like once yeah again once I noticed that it's like everywhere and it just really started to irritate me and also there's like this whole thing where Kale asks questions in this like really flat way and that his questions are written without question marks and I'm like oh my god I don't know so like I realize that is extremely nitpicky but 
those sorts of things just really got on my nerves for some reason. So that's why I think it was a three and a half instead of like a four star book for me. But again, like this was very enjoyable, which I was very pleased about. I'm glad that this general trend of the this Throne of Glass series has gone upwards. I'm actually reading the last one right now because, well, one, I borrowed it from my library and my hold expires tomorrow. So I'm like, well, I, I better read that, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually excited to see how this story concludes. So finally, the last book I'm going to talk about today is a four-star book, and that's Heartbreak for Hire by Sonia Hartle. So I received this from review from the publisher through NetGalley, and this comes out July 27th. So this is an adult romance where we follow Brinkley, who works at Heartbreak for Hire, and this is this company that specializes in revenge for jilted lovers, frenemies, and co-workers looking to take men down a notch. The boss at this company hires some male heartbreakers for the first time, and Brinkley is no longer sure that she's doing the right thing, especially when one of these guys was a former target of hers. So this was pretty enjoyable, though there were definitely some like sad and tough themes, I think, here. There are content warnings for abusive relationships and sexual harassment. I think this book has a very readable quality to it, and I definitely wanted to keep reading. I think just in general, this company idea was really interesting. And it was cool to see it like in context of the book, you know, it allows Brinkley, I think, to work out her feelings and move on from her previous like pretty awful relationship and friendships. <laughs> so some of the things that Brinkley has had in her past were like sadly a little bit relatable for me. And, you know, I've had some similar things happen before, so it was hard to read about for me at times. But like, again, that this is going to be very person dependent and you know like have you had a bad relationship you know for me yeah it was like kind of bringing up some not so great memories but at the same time i'm like okay well i know exactly where you're coming from girl like i get it i get it so in general i think the pacing was pretty good overall and it does have some very humorous moments and some satisfying ones where these jerks get what's coming to them I liked Brinkley as a main character overall. I think she seems pretty spunky, though she definitely has to deal with overcoming feelings that she's not good enough, and she also has to navigate some tough relationships. It can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming with her like immediate urge to give up, and so I think that was one of the reasons why it held me back from a five-star rating, but like again, I really enjoyed this book. I felt really proud of Brinkley for her character arc, and I can certainly like respect that she doesn't want to deal with the cutthroat world of academia and wants to pursue her artistic ambitions. In terms of the love interest, I definitely felt the chemistry there. He also, has, I think, has to deal with figuring out what he wants to do versus what he thinks others expect of him. The drama here is a bit tough, but I do feel like they can move past it, so that was, you know, pleasing to see. I also really liked Emma, Brinkley's friend and co-worker. I think she's really supportive, and she also wants to pursue her own goals. I think Emma pursuing her own goals kind of helps Brinkley to pursue hers as well. Margot, the boss, you know, I have a lot more mixed feelings about her. She seems to kind of be nice, but she is also somewhat manipulative. And then we also have Brinkley's mom, and they have a really tough relationship, but I liked getting to see them, you know, work things out and, like, truly get to know each other. I think there were some, like, really touching moments with them. So, yeah, overall, I definitely enjoyed my time with this book. I would certainly recommend it if you are interested in, you know, this, this premise and if you're looking for a fun romance to read. So with that, those are all the books that I have to talk to you about today. Like I mentioned, I am currently making my way through Kingdom of Ash, which is the last book in the Throne of Glass series. Like, it's, I'm very close to being done with it. I'm definitely going to finish it today. It's, again, feeling, like, overly long. It's almost a thousand pages, which I'm like, well, why? But <laughs> I think it does have some really epic moments so far. So I'm excited to see how this concludes. Yeah, other than that, like, I'm not really sure what I'm going to read this week. I know I have a couple more review books that I sh really should get to. I've recently acquired a good number of books, so I'm going to have to do some book hauls here. I actually went to the used bookstore the other day, so I have, like, several used books that I'll probably do just a separate video on, and then I've got some some new books that I bought. I don't know, my self-restraint has kind of gone out the window, especially because I'm like, mm, I'm going to buy these as, you know, graduation presents to myself, so that has happened, but anyway at some point i know i'm going to be buddy reading malice by john Wynn, so i'm excited and kind of nervous for that we'll see how that goes so with that i guess let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up and for your question of the day 
oh, what is a good beach read book that you have read, you know, either this year or in previous years. So I do have a Discord channel, and if you want to join that, the link is in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up, so that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.